Hello, I'm Wendy and this is Summer Bay Studio. Um, if you watched my video a couple ago with the new glue book I started, I'm going to kind of expand on that today. And the reason is because this is, this is the, a picture of the pages. And I, I used a magazine type thing to use. I, got, I picked this up at the health food store. Um, and I thought I would use it, but it turns out it's not all that successful because the paper, the pages are too glossy, the glue doesn't really want to stick, and I end up having to use different glue. So what I used was uh, just a glue stick, and I'm going to now have to use a stronger glue or more reliable glue. And instead of using this kind of glossy paper, I decided to just create my own book. And the way I'm going to do that is I've got um, these little rings from a happy planner. And you can buy this kind of stuff in lots of places, not just that brand, but I, I use happy planner because I really like it. And I also bought the this happy planner um, punch so that it, it does the holes that fit these things and I decided because I'd really like to have a lot of creative scope that if I create my own book uh, it's endless how much I can put in it and I bought and you can use like I can use any kind of paper I can use any size of paper I can put any kind of pictures I want into it any kind of mixed media, watercolors, um, acrylic paintings, whatever I want into it. And I can use something like this, which is just cardstock, or watercolor paper, which is heavier and can be used with watercolor or acrylic paints. And I, I have a lot of this size because I, some time ago I bought a whole like 25 pack of watercolor paper. And it's not the highest quality watercolor paper, so I really don't mind cutting it apart. And I can make the pages, like I really like the size of the pages of this, which is 8 by 8. And this, of course, this is like 7 by 11. But if I, if I put it in the book like this, just cut off this extra, and then have the other pages this size, or or even, um, hold on a second. Even the size of a travel journal, like this. Then, so this this is the the size eight by eight. But if I want to put in pages that are are this size, well, why not? I can. So it gives me a whole lot more scope for any kind of journal and any kind of medium. So, you know, I could do a coloring page and stick it in there. And then I can just keep adding to it. And I love that concept. The other great thing is it uh, the pages will all be flat. So the only thing, probably the only drawback is that if I wanted to do uh, like a, like a two-page layout like this, I... I would have to remember that it's going to have an opening with the binding and and the little um, punch marks here and but I could create it all on one sheet say I wanted to do one sheet like this I could then cut it in half put the binding in and still have a whole layout however I want it or I could just I can do one side or I can do both sides the scope is just endless so I'm going to start with a page today and just do some fun things and so let's get started. It's so hot today, I've been turning off my lights the minute I'm finished, that's better. So my first step in the process here today is to take these two pages out of this book and as you can see I'm going to need to do some more gluing here. But in the meantime, I thought I would just take them out and I'm, I'm going to just use a knife here. Okay, now I don't need this anymore. In fact, I think it'll probably hit the garbage. Just 
place for it. I mean, it's got good information about health, but I'm kind of done with it. So, so that's that. So now I have two pages here. Um, this has a bit of a funny edge, which quite frankly doesn't doesn't really bother me. In fact, I think I'm just going to leave it. And so what I want to do with this is, it's got measurements on it. And I haven't used it before. Let me try it this way. So I want to make sure I, I line up line things up evenly. If I put it up to the end like that, it's not going to be even. So what I'm doing is just kind of eyeballing it between these two marks. I think that looks pretty pretty even. So there's one page and then this one will go the other direction. And I'm, I'm doing the same with it, just to line that up. Make sure it's in there good and solid. Give it a good punch. Oh no! It was not in there good and solid. Well, you know what? I'm just going to try it again. Nothing, nothing ventured, nothing gained. And we all make mistakes, so how do we tell if it's all the way in? That's it. Well, it's not pretty, but it'll still work. Now all I have to do is just um, put the, the little things in here. So these will just pop in like this. I'm going to line them up like this and do a few. Just to show you how. Once these are all together, then I've got a book that opens up like this. And these things come in different colors, like all kinds of colors. Um, I have gold ones that I might switch it out to, but they were in use at the moment. So this is the concept for the book. Now, I'm, I'm not going to do anything more with that on this video because I've already said I'm going to re-glue that and you don't need to watch that. It's pretty, pretty self-explanatory and uh, I don't want to bore you. Today I decided to use this sheet, which is just cardstock. And I'm going to cut it to eight by eight. Once I get the measuring stick out. And I don't think I'm gonna use paint on it today, so I don't need to add gesso or anything like that to make it make the surface change. I'm just going to use glue. Now the the nice thing about using a glue stick, and I have many that I've tried, is that it, it tends not to, because they're fairly dry, they tend not to buckle the paper. But I haven't really had huge successes and I've tried lots as you can tell. So I'm just going to I'm just going to go ahead and use this glue, which is the Art Glitter Glue, and I'll put a link below for that. And I want to start by by putting just down some torn paper. I have a good bin full here. So I've got some from uh, my altered book project. I've got some of this from an old agenda. Maybe I'll take one of these two with the number on it. That's kind of pretty. I like that. So my idea is just to just to put stuff down and have it in place. This is a cardstock. I, I would like to use that, but it's on cardstock, which is pretty heavy. Um, nothing wrong with that. I'm just not sure that I want to do it. Let's see what else I've got here. Here's a bit of tissue paper. No, that's too shiny. I'm not even sure where I got that. And 
these are cute for I think I'll do something else with those but this is a nice a nice piece and I think it's from a scrapbooking um, pack so there's a few odds and ends that I can use just to put down kind of a base layer don't need this today and also don't think I'll use these so they can go back I like the I like this oh, that's quite pretty and so is this so I think I'll, I think I'll maybe take this edge off because it has that perforation line on it which I don't really need all right now the question is which direction I think I like it this way I'm just gonna tear some of it Perfect. Wow. That worked out. Okay, this one can go on the bottom. Trying to make this fast today because it's uh, we're in a heat wave here where we don't often have them. Uh, I'm kind of going like I don't want to have the, my my lights on for very long because it'll heat up the house more. And I've got an air conditioner, but it's just a small window one because we don't have a huge house and we don't have central air. So I don't want to have my lights on too long because I don't want the house to heat up at all because by evening it's ridiculous it's supposed to be up to 44 degrees Celsius today which is like 112 or something it's um, unbelievable I turned on my little fan here to just keep myself a bit cool as well all right where does this one go now Let's... this one goes like this There will end up being quite a bit of glue in this thing, but then it, it's a glue book. It's its purposes will be served. Now for this, I want to add a little color. I want to use this little pad in this pink ink that I recently got and have hardly used. It, this probably will end up being covered up anyway, but I'm going to add a bit of pizzazz just in case it's the edge that shows. Okay, that'll do it. That fits in there. This, and I think I'll do the same. This one will go this way. I find this a little bit easier than working in a journal. Yeah, because it's just a flat piece of paper. And this one, I am going to use the blue, the blue pad. Now remember, when, when I do put it in the book, I'll be clipping along one side, so. There's the background for this page and when it goes in the book well anytime actually I can decorate the back of it or I can just leave it blank whatever I like and I, I have spent a lot of time collecting pieces of ephemera and whatnot there's a leaf trying to escape and what I've done is I, I this is just a binder and I made these things for the little pieces of of ephemera and odds and ends but then I started cutting out of books like I'll show you I just got a new one found this at a local used bookstore which is and it's full of of beautiful 
old-fashioned flower illustrations. I haven't started cutting it and to be honest it's a little hard to because artists explain how to draw flowers because there's there's just so much in it um, and it's got gold on the edge I mean I love books so it's hard to cut them up however if you I kind of think if you're cutting it up to make a new book then you're you're safe if I wanted to make a color theme then I could choose some pieces out of here for example like this is massive And I haven't quite figured out a, a better system. That is beautiful. Those are old roses, it looks like. And I cut them, some of them are so fine, like you can see the stems there, that they're extremely fragile. Here's a large one. I don't think I'll do yellow because I did yellow in the other pages. But I'll start with that and see which one I like best. And then <clears throat> just pop these back in here, trying to make sure not to bend any stems. I find if I put them through as a whole pack, it goes better than if I try to put them in individually. Honestly, they're just too weedy. This is pretty with the rose hip. So I'll consider those. I've got the birds. I'm, I'll come back to that. And these roses. I don't know how those guys got out. So I've pulled out masses of pieces here that I could, I could use, um, and may or may not. Well, probably won't use them all, obviously, because I can't. There's not enough room. But I thought I would just pull out some things that appeal to me and then just start putting them down. I've got this, these big roses and I'm going to put them along the side here. I still haven't got a really satisfactory storage system for all the little pieces that I've created all the pieces of, pieces of ephemera that are all different sizes um, especially the bigger ones with with skinny stems and that sort of thing so if you have any ideas that work for you or that you want to share or whatever um, I would definitely be open to hearing of them Okay, so I've got this one and uh, I've decided to use this very fragile piece and putting it down it's going to be tricky because I need something to glue on and I'm going to use a glue stick on this because of fact that it's just so so fragile and I want to go out to the edges especially on these tiny stems help having a lumpy thing underneath there to turn off this fan or it'll dry my glue before I can put it down that's one of the problems with glue sticks I found that they just dry really quickly because they're already quite dry can just pick that up with my fingers like this, unstick it for a moment. And pop it on here. Now the I'm keeping in mind that I'm going to be chopping uh, punch holes along there. I don't want it to cut too much out of the piece. And then I'm going to get things like this that didn't stick down, which I'm, you know, fully cognizant of, mainly because I put that glue on first, I guess, and it's already dried off. I'm just going to put some more on here. I'm not going to fold it, but I'm going to turn it over and try to hold it to get glue on the bottom there. So as long as it doesn't come flying up, that's the main thing. Okay, 
um, what else did I decide on? I like this little girl with her jump rope. I'm gonna put that up there. Actually, I don't think I'll put it right at the top. I'm gonna put it here. So already I have four layers in this spot, which is totally fine. I want this one right in the middle. Um, and this I cut out of a Tasha Tudor book, which was really hard to do because they had pictures on both sides of every illustration. So then I had to choose which one to sacrifice. See the glue coming out inside there. But I'm just going to let it be. Now, uh, what did I have here? These adorable little foxes having a nice evening at home. So they can go along the bottom of the page. So I've had people kind of wonder out loud or in print what's the purpose of a blue book or a junk journal. You know, if you need to have a purpose, what would it be? And my answer would be it, it is um, mainly just to do something enjoyable. I like this writing on the back here. And I got these in a pack of things that I ordered. I think I want more roses actually. That looks nice with the blue. Let's just do that one. These are very tricky. If you've ever ordered these, don't try to put your thumbnail in between the backing and the front. This is like a washi tape sticker. Washi sticker. You can't, you can't, you won't succeed. It'll just drive you nuts. You have to just run your thumb along the edge and it'll catch that. So that one can go right there. And what else do I want? I've got some other things here. There's a butterfly. There's a leafy thing and some mushrooms. You can re really put on as much as you want. I had a little topiary here that I wanted to add. Where did I put it? Oh, here it is. this bird nest as well. I think I like it there. Just tipped a little bit. Anyway, I don't think I need to have these here anymore. I don't think I'll use another one right now, so I'm just going to remove them from the else. Okay, I want this topiary and I'm going to use the glue stick again because, I mentioned, as I mentioned before, it's, it's just so fragile. way the glue gets right to the edge. Put this right here. And this is from a cookbook, an illustrated cookbook. And it's the art of Shelley Reed Smith who does beautiful work. Yeah. Also this one I think I'll do with the glue stick because same reason. This bird is barely hanging on. So that's the thing with this, you have to really be careful and make sure that you don't tug on the, the tiny pieces the wrong way. And I did cut these all by hand and I found it so relaxing to just sit and watch TV in the evening and just cut out these little pieces. Now they can be cut with machine if you have the right kind of machine, but I don't in this case because I'd have to scan them into my computer and then change the format so that they would work with my Cricut machine and who needs it? Not I. Don't need that. Don't need that much work. I have other things to do. 
keep that this a little bit dark. I do like the mushrooms, but you know, I think I need some butterflies. So I'm getting out my butterfly drawer here. And let's look at the colors that will work. These ones are fun because they only attach at the back and then their, their wings kind of flip. I like these tiny blue ones as well. It's cute. Oh, and I have bugs. I like that bug. And some of these. Nope, not that one. This one maybe. It's kind of fuss overwhelm in a way. Actually I don't mean that. It's not fuss overwhelm. It's it's fun and it's it's creative and it's relaxing. And then you make something nice. find some little pieces. I like that one with the writing on it. And then um, there's these tiny Let's see what we got here. So the difference between a junk journal and a glue book in it is in a glue book you're not leaving spaces to journal. And and really it's just a treat for you yourself. So it's just a tiny little piece of paper here. This one I did cut with my Cricut machine. And it does such a superlative job. It's amazing. I, I Put a link. Yes, I have a link below um, where you can find them. I have a cr Cricut maker so that I can make all kinds of things. Now I want that down there. butterfly is going to go up in there somewhere. Just like that. Put that down. And I think we're finished. Um, like I said, I did have another little piece that I pulled out that has words on it and I don't really know what happened to it. This is nice. I'm sure it'll turn up when I start cleaning up. This is nice too. It's actually from my own um, vintage French, French vintage series, but it doesn't work now because I filled in all the spaces can't find that little piece. Oh, here it is. There it is. I want to put this sentiment, sentiment in. I think that is a good spot for it. Chance the glue stick again. Once you get a lot on it, and if you're quick and put them down quite quickly, and put them on something that has some tooth to it, paper I mean then it then they stick pretty well so there is that and I think I might be done now I'm going to put a line around this
this is a the Galaxy Marker Paint Like Ink. I think that's enough. So there's my pretty page. I'll put the, the binding along here or here. It depends. I haven't decided that yet. And I think what I'll do is finish this side before I do. And then I'll know where to put it in the book. But like I said at the beginning, it makes for an endless book that you can put anything in. So it's a, it's a glue book. It can be a junk journal if you want to put journaling spaces in it. It can be uh, a watercolor book. It can be an acrylic painting book, um, like an art journal. It's an everything book. So I hope you'll give it a try. I hope you enjoyed this and got some ideas from it. Please subscribe to my channel and click the little bell so you can be notified when I have a new video. And I'll see you next time.